welcome to Crappens. Don't wait a week for a new video. Join our Patreon at the Crappens On Demand level for instant recap access. Link in description. Enjoy the show. Well, hello and welcome to What's What Crappens, the podcast for all that crap that we love to talk about on ABC. Just kidding. Fuck that channel. Oh, I'm Bravo, wow. everybody. I'm Ronnie. That's Ben over there. Hi, Ben. Hi, Ronnie. How are you? feeling 90 years old today, Ben. What else is new? Am I right? <laughs> Listen, I got to say, I got to say, I have to thank You're the good people. You're supposed to say why. Why do you feel 90 years old, Ronnie? And then I'm supposed to say something. <laughs> okay, why? Like, that's because it's called banter, Ben. You're not just no, supposed it's called... to be like, you feel 90 years old every day. You old fucking carcass. <laughs> you, you I felt like carcass. it was an improvement. I thought it was an improvement as opposed to like 95. You're aging down. Okay, so what's wrong, Ronnie? Nothing. Never mind, Ben. Okay, just go ahead. Please tell me whatever you were going to talk about. No, I'm I have to kidding. say, I have to I say, we all like it's answer. just like this is what life is like these days. We're always it is, it's yeah. like we always just feel old. So what's going on? What's what's triggered your your age feelings? Actually, I was just because I said ABC and that made me think of The Bachelor, and I know nothing that's going on on that channel anymore on The mm -hmm. Bachelor anymore, and I just feel so old because people are something big happened or it's like the finale or something and so everybody you know like claire and emma the claire and emma pod we love those yeah. girls are so nice and we follow them and i saw their thing like oh my god blah 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 and then i saw stephanie um and them on you know bachelor my old podcast hello what is wrong with me rose, rose bricks talking like something news coming in it's the bachelor and i'm just like and then i see the pictures they're posting and i'm like what are these people 12 do we have a bachelor age 12 because that's what tv is starting <laughs> to look like to me i'm Bachelor like why are children prom. dating and why are they dating on television this should be illegal and then summer house everybody's so young and then this other summer house we're doing everybody's so young and i'm just like oh my god i've never felt my underarm skin more that's my i point. have to tell you it's so funny about the bachelor stuff because last night i like went onto twitter and there was a big old photo of like nick bial with like a baby and just like tattoos sophie ross one of our one of our colleagues sophie ross had posted it and he just had these awful clip art tattoos and i was like if i had known this man had these horrible tattoos i never would have said hello to him at an airport now i'm also more terrible... mortified for myself <laughs> i never would have done it i don't say His hello to people is... with terrible clip art tattoos that's funny um yeah he has katie and dana on there uh i saw can you tell i was lying in bed katie all day, feeling old. i was like i'm just gonna watch instagram all day katie, katie from vanderpump rules and dana, and dana. from vanderpump rules dana, dana. Once he's oh dana vanderpump oh because they have their podcast yes on the nick file network and oh. so they're on there talking about whatever you know they're like well we'll talk more about it tomorrow on our podcast it's like oh, i'm watching <laughs> this instagram can you tell me in this instagram because all i'm going to watch is your instagram talking about what you talked so don't like give me an advertisement for another podcast that i have to wait for the instagram clip you know what i mean it's a lot of instagram clips i'm waiting for yeah well Basically. listen there are a lot of okay i think one thing that we may may have to do uh, to make our lives better is to maybe cut out this like Vial world from ourselves because it's obviously bringing us distress I'm and also distressed. Distressed. <laughs> and we can't cut it out because i love your distressment is that a word i love your distress let's focus on positive things which is that i want to thank the good people of the decheco pasta organization they are not sponsors of this show but their pasta box is holding up my microphone today so thank you <laughs> for making an appropriately sized pasta box to make this experience much easier for me while I'm here in New York. Also, thank you to TJ Maxx for providing that artwork behind Ben that makes him look like he's about to rock up yes. it. Yes, yes. Thank because. you, TJ Maxx, for providing this generic um, apartment art. It's for guitars, because <laughs> who else loves to rock when you're in midtown Manhattan? That's Ben. Go over to Ben's. He's going to whip out a guitar and sing you a ditty. Yeah, and I'm going to get a silly tattoo and you can call me ben val so um today we're talking below deck actually you might not believe it but we actually we are, are talking below deck that, that <laughs> yeah is, that, that is, is the plan the yeah um and we also will be talking all sorts of bravo things at netflix is a joke uh in early may may 3rd at the kookaburra lounge in hollywood we're gonna do an intimate hilarious show so please come and join us for that we're gonna have so much fun and party afterwards. And then um, we're going to Europe. 
We're going to go to London and Birmingham and Dublin. It's going to be a great, great time. I uh, can't wait to finally meet all our UK and Ireland listeners. That's just going to be a great, 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 great time. So go to watchacrappens.com to get tickets for all those events. Yes, and bonuses, videos, all that are on Patreon. This week, I think we're doing a preview of something. Not sure. Haven't talked about it. Who knows Possibly what? Jersey? I don't know. We had talked what? about uh, the, oh, ballad the ballad being on the bonus, but now the ballad is going to be on the main feed, I think, right? Oh, gosh. I don't know, everybody. There's a lot going on. Just, just keep coming, we're just play keep it by coming back. We're here all the goddamn time. I don't want to commit okay, us to anything. So below Deck, Season 11, Episode 8. Kit yeah. has just left the boat. She's got issues with herself, with her friends, with her family. Kat got a call from an... A sobbing cat, <laughs> which is funny because it was a sobbing cat talking to a sobbing cat, an actual mm. kitty cat. Sobbing. That's right. I heard it myself. The cat had to go off to another adventure, so she left, and all the guests were watching. And then um, Barb, uh, Barb took it really hard, Barbie. She said, I want to jump off the boat. How about you? Okay, Barbie. Well, I'm glad to see that you made yourself the victim in this cat scenario. <laughs> and and then uh, Carrie has to go over to the guests because the guests are all watching it. They don't know what's going on. They're like, oh, God, I hope she's okay. God, I feel so terrible for her. As they're sitting there sipping on their, you know, their their beverages and they're luxuriating in their vacation. <laughs> it's yeah. like wealthy people concern. Oh, like dear, someone from the help. Braids. Yeah. <laughs> I have to keep bringing up Skrillex this week for no reason. Skrillex. Skrillex. Now I've said Skrillex a lot, so it's just appearing everywhere now. Now now the universe is just playing a joke on me because Skrillex appeared two days in a row in my life. And I was like, well, where did that come from? Yeah. And so now it's appearing everywhere. <laughs> just yeah. I don't know. I'm like, hey, Amazon, maybe it's time to order some new dog food. And she's like, you want me to play Skrillex? I'm like, no, that's not what I said. <laughs> You're like, Alexa, please get it together. My name's no longer Alexa. It's now Skrillex. Did you mean Skrillex? <laughs> That By the way, I'm too dependent on my little robot thing. She's literally coming on at night going, don't forget to take out your trash. I'm like, come on, Monty. Like, seriously, <laughs> you have to have a machine remind you to take out the fucking trash? And apparently, yes, I do. Yeah, I do. I set a reminder to myself. Gloop. Don't eat that shrimp. God damn it. <laughs> she knows me so well. Okay, so Carrie's like, we're two crew down and we're in a tough situation. My focus is supporting my crew. Also, learning Turkish. Let's face it, difficult. <laughs> both, both difficult. But I'm picturing the Titanic and the boat going down and the band playing and then the band starts playing. I like big butts and I cannot lie. So I go <laughs> punch the violinist in the face and I say, we're not doing that. We're playing something happy today, God damn it. And that's when the adventure begins. It's called a multiverse. Look into it. <laughs> it's a different timeline. You'll hear about that later. So, um, by the way, just what you love to hear from the captain of your boat. Like, like one person leaves, well, it's like the Titanic. We're all going down now. <laughs> please, please don't ever let a captain say that on this show. I know. Crying stew straight ahead. So I feel then, like normal people can still say that. Like, we can say that. Like, wow, this recap sure is like the Titanic going. Because it's, you know, it's like whatever to us. But you can't have somebody in that industry. That's still a very big moment for you guys, okay? And you someone is building the new Titanic. Did you read that? Someone's building a replica no. of the Titanic. Why? What part about the Titanic? Like, leave leave the Titanic alone, okay? Literally, like, four people died last summer because of Titan Titanic mania, all right? Yeah, do we, how, on, how much do we, like, we just don't, we don't need to go back. To, we don't need the Titanic, we have we like need it. princess we cruises. Needed it. Yeah, we, we never, never needed it. it. And also, have why a do we need to fix the future? Like they're like, oh, you know what? I'm going to invest in fixing the past. Fix something bigger. Like there, are, we have way bigger things to fix in this world. There's <laughs> the Titanic. I mean, no offense to Kathy Bates's friends. Or there was literally friends. a horrific maritime tragedy that happened today. Okay, we do not need to add the Titanic. We're still working on our regular boats. Okay. Yeah. So uh, Carrie texts the staffing people who, you know, it's not Norma, but it should be. I trust Norma. Right. I feel like I trust Norma more than I trust every other boat staffing because no one else uses the same person. Like Below Deck Med always uses Norma. Norma's dependable. You know Norma's right. there. You know, even if Norma's sick, she's in bed like, Captain, it's me, Norma. <coughs> hey, never too sick to do my job, Captain. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Maybe this is just Norman. 
maybe this is just like Norman and he's like sitting on a beach somewhere listening to Jimmy Buffett and staffing yachts in the Caribbean. I'm not sure. <laughs> Well, it feels weird for it to not be like a Midwestern lady of some sort, some like variation. Maybe it's like, like, all right, I need new staff. And he's like, Hengi Uzmanglia Ikshitan Var. <laughs> it's like, damn it. I'm stymied by my own Turkish lessons. <laughs> oh, knew I shouldn't have reached out to the Istanbul office. I might be immersing myself too deeply in this. <laughs> Gotta remember there's a time and a place for Turkish lessons. <laughs> Baby, steps. Baby steps. Well, this language's gone down like the Titanic. Oh, I shouldn't have said that again. <laughs> so Sandy's like, we I guess we all have our personal things going on, but at the end of the day, you get nothing for nothing. And that's all you can say for the life of the poor. It's called spinning. Uh, everyone's running around. Look at Bobby. Just look at her. Stupid rich idiot. And Bobby's just like, <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> so much. Yeah. She I'm is like, for this. <laughs> she is scampering to know it for no reason. It's like Rebel Without a Cause, a scamper without a cause. And she's like, <sighs> like rushing around, like picking up rags, putting them down again. And Zandy's just like looking at her, like, this is what, it, this is a term I use in yachting. It's called spinning. You move really quickly, you seem busy but you're actually not more productive or getting anything down. I just want to pop her a Xanax. I'm not a pool pusher, but like, honestly, it's ridiculous right now. <laughs> and she's obviously not a Xanax user anyway, because any Xanax user knows you don't share that shit. You only get 30 a month. <laughs> I did not know that. Wow. Learned yeah. so much. It's a controlled substance. So the ladies, the, the, meanwhile, this chaos is happening downstairs, which means that, of course, we cut to the guests. The ladies are just, like, luxuriating on the deck, being like, cheers, bitches. Let's get this party started. Mortgages, am I right? Oh, my God. Can we talk about loans? I love a fixed APR. <laughs> Guys, you know what we're going to talk, what we should talk about? APRs. You are pre-approved for a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, this good time is fixed. There is no changing it. So even if you think there's a better time to be had, sorry, you're going to have to apply for that. Okay. Guess what? Guilty as charged. I'm a predatory lender of a margarita. Drink up, bitches. Oh, my God, guys. I'm in my, I'm in my thong. Can you see my Fannie Mae? <laughs> so, um, Norman, I don't know. I don't want to call him Norman. I feel like Norman's not right. I feel like Norman doesn't deserve that. Nor, nor, like, yeah, Norman, Norman doesn't deserve it. Life, you know? Norman, so Norman's a different that. show. She doesn't need to I take the blame for this, you know? I'm going to say. Somebody, I mean, this, whoever this Turkish person is hired somebody into diet culture. <laughs> <laughs> I was originally thinking that it could be like Norma Dundee, like the Australian version of Norma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good one. I like that. <laughs> Well, that's not a dickhand. This is a dickhand. Yeah. Um, so Norma Dundee is like, good news. Your dickhand will be arriving in Grenada tomorrow morning. And furthermore, I'd just like to add... <laughs> Essenslar! <laughs> <laughs> good luck. Norma Dundee, you can hear her typing into her Google Translate. <laughs> <laughs> Norma Dundee's just trying to be part of the journey. I know you're trying to learn your Turkish. <laughs> Turns out I am too, because I've been strangely put in the Istanbul office. <laughs> your new stew is arriving. Have fun on your new sea hat. That's a journey for those of you <laughs> learning. Those of you learning at home. So. <laughs> So think of your TED talk. <laughs> <laughs> but there's you, hey, you learn it. <laughs> so Fraser is like, should I look up a murder mystery story? I need a crime. I need clues. We're doing murder mystery. Okay, you're mi first of all, this is the lamest shit ever. Please stop doing this. Second of all, kill cat. I mean, she's already gone. Just yeah. say someone has murdered cat. Because this is a boat story. It's a boat murder. And it needs to end where nobody is ever found out because that shit happens all the time on like carnival cruises. Well, I shouldn't say that. They'll sue me. But, you know, big cruise lines yeah. where husbands usually, allegedly, just go toss their wives over at the carnival cruise. And guess what? Yeah. In a boat of 10,000 people and cameras everywhere, nobody sees a thing. 
that is the way to kill somebody. They should kill Kat, and it just never ends. The night just never ends. It just goes and goes and goes. Yeah. Um, I support that because, um, they, yeah, they, they, they're they already down a person. And um, also, so I've never done the murder mystery thing, but I've seen enough of it on Bravo to feel like I don't think that what they did later today was proper. That was just a scavenger hunt. <laughs> Yeah, it wasn't. It was. It was. I the was right like way. a little upset. But also, you don't have to invent murder mysteries. You know what I mean? Like to have a murder mystery party, you go online and you look up murder mystery party, and you yeah, they tell you how to do it. You print it out. Clues. <laughs> Literally, all you Stupid. have to do. It's like Stupid we have person. to come up with a murder. How does it have to do with service? And you, I'm going to get the most intelligent person on this murder mystery. Kyle, enter Kyle. <laughs> Kyle. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> So, um, yeah, Fraser's like, he's doing a classic blow deck monologue. It's like, we're missing someone outside, and now someone inside, and we've got to set up sunset drinks reception on the beach that I've not been to before, and I've got a mystery, and losing will stew is one thing, and I've, but I've been on a boat, and we've run aground, and I had to pretend like we haven't run aground to the guests, but let's be, let's be honest, I prob- probably ran, ran aground because I had a core, I, I, I had a slice of apple, and I became a hideous beast. It's my fault. <laughs> I ran us aground too fast. Oh, so the plan is beach, beach day with the guests. So I'm going to ferry the guests to the beach because it's the most gorgeous beach on the world, but it's not easy to get to because easy is boring. You know what's fun? Adventure. <laughs> so they're planning on that. And then um, he's like, yeah, the most difficult, the most amazing places are the most difficult to get to. For example, me. I've been to paradise. <laughs> But getting to me, <laughs> that's a trick. Yeah, because you know what? Every time we got very deep water coming up to a shallow beach, and every time I'm bringing up equipment, the current is pushing me to the shallow section. So you got to make a calculation. Is the risk worth the reward when it comes to the beach? Yes, it is. It is. Have you almost died um, getting swept away by the ocean ever? Um, that was just a loaded question to tell my own story. But one time I was at this private beach in Malibu because I'm really fancy. And it's the one where you go down the cliffs. Well, I guess they're all like that in Malibu. You know, you go down the cliffs. So mm-hmm. I went down the cliffs. It was like my first time. And it was so beautiful. And I fell asleep kind of in, in the afternoon. And I woke up wet. And I was already all the way up against the, the cliff wall. <laughs> that water was coming in to kill me. Okay, it was yeah. not a joke. Like it started pulling me into the water. I'm lucky I woke up, and then I started You're trying lucky. to get out of there. You can't run in mud, okay? No. In the muddy, I, w- I thought I was gonna die. I was like, I'm gonna die at a private beach in Malibu, and nobody's gonna even know because if they start looking for me, no one's gonna think Ronnie went to a beach. Like, you'll be like a wife on a cruise that? ship. You'll be just <laughs> disappear. Be like a wife on a cruise ship, but nobody would care. There's not even a husband to murder me. You know. I, um, when I went to Kauai like 10 years ago, I went on this ridiculous hike and in the middle of it, the, you're in the jungle and in the middle you like emerge at this beach. It's beautiful, the most beautiful beach you've ever seen in your life. And you're so hot from hiking that you just like, you just want to run right into that ocean. So like, that's what we did. We're like, ah, oh, yes. So we ran in the ocean. I was like, gosh, these waves are strong. And I am being, I was sort of getting pulled. Like I start, I get, entered the ocean in one section, but when I came out of the ocean, I was like farther down the beach. I was like, that's wild. And later on, when I was reading about the hike, it said, and then in the middle of the hike, there's this beach, which you're not allowed to go. You're not allowed to go into the surf there because it's the most dangerous beach in all of Kauai and everyone dies there. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> Yeah. I swam in the death. I swam in the death ocean. <laughs> yeah, guys, read the signs. Is the point? There you were know. no signs. There it was had a to beautiful have been beach. Signs. Maybe well, the I didn't see any. Because I didn't see cat. any signs until I almost died, and then I was like, "Why didn't anybody almost tell me? I could have died in there." Like I was freaking out, and I was like, "No one's even going to believe this story. I was just alone. There's no witnesses. I'm going to sound dramatic. I'm all alone in this experience." And then I got into my car, which at the time was my little Suzuki sidekick, my little red wow. car my little red square car and I got in there and I closed the door and I was crying and I looked up and there was a sign. <laughs> it was like high tide. You know. Don't what swim. Do I know? I'm from El Paso. I don't know what a high tide is. I don't know okay. these things. So anyway, the point is they're going to a beach picnic and I almost died one time. <laughs> <laughs> this was a triggering beach picnic for Ronnie. It reminded him of his mortality. <laughs> I almost died. Yeah. Normally, I don't mind when I almost die. I think it's almost dying so many times that now I'm like 48. If I think I have a heart attack, I'm like, well, bye. But it's like dying in such a sneaky way by nature. 
Yeah, it's like nature was fucking tricked by nature because I've always knew, known nature as a fucking bitch. I've always known it. I've always hated nature. And I've always had a feeling that's how I'm gonna go. Some horrible, stupid way, like getting dragged into the ocean. <laughs> getting dragged into the ocean is actually worse than actually just being in the ocean and drowning. <laughs> I think being worse. dragged in is because it's like you were actually not even in there. And I wasn't like, in there. Yeah. I was there because I was like thin for 10 like minutes. Not even a and I was like, I can take off my shirt now, you know? So I went like for one second and then the universe almost murdered me for it. The ocean is insidious. I mean, that's why it I'm, is. that's why I get served North Sea TikTok. All the time. <laughs> Yo ho, all hands. Oh, do, do. Um, so, so anyway. Anthony's like, tonight is going to be an ocean party. In Granada, we get to bet fresh seafood in the world. And this boat is so much pressure. So much pressure, daddy. So then we go to Barbie cleaning again, and um, you know, Ben's getting that tender to the beach, and he's struggling, struggling. Yes. Um, and so uh, but, so he gets it to the beach, and then he actually gets it stuck. He gets too close. I guess he gets into the shallow area, right? So he gets sand into the, into the engine, and it just starts to kind of, like, die down and everything. And so he's like, oh, it's the sound you never want to hear. Sand gets sucked up into the impeller. It's like a grinding, crunching sound. It means you're in trouble. And this is this is the part where they say impeller about like twelve times in a row. <laughs> Got some shit in the impeller. There's shit in the impeller. We know the, the sound. The it's the voice of Gary from Below Deck. Um, <laughs> below deck. <laughs> That's what sound of the impeller sounds like. Hello, Also. The impeller tragedy also um, allows Carrie and Ben to lean into being Australian because they have this very small interaction that just felt so Aussie. Ben's like, got some shit in the impeller? And Carrie goes, you reckon? <laughs> <laughs> you got some shit in the impeller? Or did you see an impala? Oh, I saw a little bit of both. And a wallaby. <laughs> a wallaby. What an adventure. <laughs> so uh, back on the boat, Barbie is taking breaks and she's getting the Hannah edit where she's just, she's like, okay, I'm going on a break now. And you see her go and she just sits there and you see her like vaping. And then they just cut to the same shot of her vaping 30 times to make it look like she's been there 20 yeah. hours. And Zandy well, starts getting pissed. Well, because Barbie said, um, I'm just going to do, I'm just going to go down for like five minutes and then I'm going to clear the table. But then she goes downstairs and is like watching like season, th like a season three rewatch of American Idol. And so then Zandy has to clean, clear the table for Barbie. Yeah, and she's not happy. And so Barbie's like, yeah, but we're still down. We're doing the best we can. Like, you have to be everywhere at once. You know what I mean? So I'm like, gonna, am I going to make mistakes? Sure. Like, absolutely. But I'm exhausted. <sighs> <laughs> so then Zandy's like, sometimes she doesn't know how to prioritize things. It's so frustrating. We should just do work together and do what we're told. I can't. <laughs> and, um, and then we get a return well, of something. Five minutes that ago, you were saying she needed to calm down and take his annex. Yeah. So then five minutes later, you can't complain that she's too calm. Like, pick a lane. <laughs> calm and work. That's what she wants. She doesn't want calm and sitting. Well, okay? you know, we'll shape it. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll just chisel away at the behavior you want. If you've got time to lean, you've got time to clean in a less frantic way. Oh, please. Um, if you've got time to gape, i got time to vape. That's what I say. If you've got time to eat ham, I've got time to watch dryer cam because that's what we get next. <laughs> we have Zandy I love putting this stuff. Fucking dryer cam. It's my favorite I know. thing. And it's their favorite thing too. They show it to us all the time. It's I know. Crazy. They put that GoPro. It's like, I don't know where they got that heat resistant, water resistant. Well, no, I guess there's no water, but that heat resistant GoPro, they just love sticking it in there. And this they time sure we got do. a big long shot. So we saw Zandy's head like it started, and then Zandy's head went upside down. It was great. Yeah. Um, so then Carrie is, I don't know, you know, people are working, Anthony's looking for garlic, but it's on the counter and he, you know, he has a very moment, like, like all aging people do, like talking about aging today. He's not aging. He's still very young. He's like a very young guy from, um, murder, whatever. We've already said that, but the traders. he looks like that guy, huh? The traders. Yeah. The traders. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Alan coming. Yeah. You know, I'm across murder. the street. Yeah. But speaking um, of aging, he's doing the thing you do as you get aged, especially if you're an aging stoner like me, where nothing is ever where you could have sworn it is. 
I moved into a house with so many drawers. I can't. I don't know what I was doing to myself. I'm gonna die here. I'm gonna die like I'm gonna die holding onto a drawer, <laughs> unable to find something. Because that's my whole life now. It's like, wait, where are the scissors? This is a scissor drawer. But I know this is a scissor drawer. I even wrote in my phone, where are the scissors? In the scissor drawer. It's not yeah. here. Where are my Where are my scissors? And then I go open every drawer because I've got 900 drawers now. So I start opening every drawer and like throwing everything out of the drawers. And I cannot find the scissors. And I don't open the box. And then two hours later, guess where the scissors are? In the scissor drawer. The fucking scissor drawer. They were there the whole time. And and while you're distracted, looking through your drawers, the ocean's going to come creep up behind you and drag you into it. That's I'm how it happens. I'm onto a drawer with one arm and just drowned on the floor. <laughs> through the ocean. Body. The ocean crawled up to Austin. It's like, I knew I'd find you. Um. <laughs> I was just thinking today, why are all of our recaps two hours this week? This is why. This is I why. I can't concentrate. I don't know why. We, we're not concentrating. Okay, concentrate. It's that New York energy I feel like I'm bringing. It's me. It's me. <laughs> um, it's, the, it's the bustle of the big city. Some NY energy. New York. Literally, I don't know why I just took credit for that. Um, so uh, Anthony's basically looking for garlic. So this is, up, this is so below, below deck that we actually going to like stop the whole show to watch someone look for garlic. Um, but it's, just, it's to build a case that he's disorganized. And so then we go back to the beach. It's getting a little windy. Bad weather's coming in. Whitney and Ada. And Carrie's like, Captain Carrie's like, uh, he's like, well, we got to get them back on. Yeah, it's getting way too dark to do this any other way. We got to do this. We got to get them back to the boat. And somewhere in Florida, Captain Sandy was like, everybody stop, stop talking. Someone on my favorite show is watching my favorite show. It's so meta. <laughs> Wind. Wind. <laughs> this fall on NBC. <laughs> Not ABC. That's for people who are about to die, apparently. <laughs> getting wow, dragged Captain into the ocean. Sure looks good. God, has he been getting facials? <laughs> Lost his hair, though. God, I'm. you know, I'm so glad I turned on. Uh, I started subscribing to Turkish television. I never thought I'd see Below Deck on it, but here it is. <laughs> so Ben is telling the guests, oh, guys, the tender is out of action. And they're like, oh, no, the tender, but the tide, the tide is coming. And he's like, but they're saying they're putting the gear, well, we're going to put everything in a little boat and then have you over in a little boat and then we'll get a bigger boat and get, get you in the bigger boat and then everyone's going to get over. It's going to be okay. <laughs> so these storm clouds are coming in. It's getting dark. One of the boats is broken. Everyone is packing up the beach, like around these, these guests are just sort of sitting in chairs. Fraser is topping off their champagne. Uh, trying to act like everything is fine. It is kind of Titanic-esque. Like, everything's fine. No, there's not a storm. There's Even though everyone looks frantic around us, it's totally okay. Nothing's going wrong. And, <laughs> everything's um, fine. Nothing to see here. But now, finally, it's time to bring... They, they, they load up the boat, and then the guests are the last ones to come in. But the thing is, the tide is coming out, and the water is getting weird. And so now it's time for them to get on the boat. So Leslie is first. She's the one with the Skrillex braid. And, and so the she's like, like... Do not touch the boat unless I tell you to touch the boat. She's like, I'm touching the boat. He's like, go damn it, Leslie! <laughs> and the lady goes, oh, my God, Leslie! When she like goes to like touch the boat. Leslie, no! Not the Leslie, boat. Don't do Leslie. It. No one moves towards the boat unless I would say so. Got it, Skrillex. <laughs> Leslie, think about the loans you could be giving out, please. There's a whole future. There are so many people waiting to close on a house, <laughs> Leslie. Mortgage rates are going down. Interest rates are going up. Come on, Leslie. <laughs> Leslie, your appraiser needs you. So he kind of gets stern with her, and she's like, oh, my God, the captain is getting so aggro. <laughs> yeah, Leslie, because you're touching the fucking, what did you Leslie. not hear about don't touch the boat? Have you ever heard of an Impala, Leslie? Do you want to be a part of it? All mushed up, like a little meat taco. You're about to be. Leslie, have you seen the movie Castaway? Because that will be you soon on this island if you don't start cooperating. They're just going to leave you there with a volleyball, okay? And then how we like it, okay? Yeah, Leslie. Fucking moron. <laughs> Just so then, uh, back on the boat, the boat. Fraser's <laughs> checking on Zandy, and she's like, I've only sat down for three minutes since this morning. I can't do it. And then Kyle hits his head on something. And yeah. um, now they're talking about the murder part. Because they, they, the, they made it to the yacht. They, they got on. Everything's safe. Everything's good. They're all okay, guys. Yeah, everything's okay. So um, they're going to like do this murder thing. And Leslie, one of the ladies is like, Leslie, what's your character for tonight? She goes, well, 
I'm the captain's socialite wife. I'm like, well, I'm pretty sure a socialite's not going to marry a captain, but that's fine. <laughs> yeah. It's just a very low-level socialite. She's like, I'm just here for some fund fundraisers at the Y. Good old bake sales. I'm a, I'm a, I am a socialite, but my social circle's in Tampa, so this is within character. <laughs> Do a lot of charity work, but at the actual charities, not the balls. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, I... I uh, I organize a cotillion on a pier, so <laughs> a very small town cotillion. <laughs> it's a oh. small 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 socialite. So um, now Fraser's handing out the murder rose to everybody, and he's like, "Oh, I've ordered props and bits and bobs as one does for a murder, shifting responsibility to someone else. I had them order things. I had them set things up. That's called." Being a leader. <laughs> and Ben is like, wow, well, today just keeps getting crazier and crazier. I'm like, all you had to do is drive a boat and you broke it. So I don't know. Yeah, maybe um, that sucks sand up in engines, Ben. Yeah, okay. that's a great idea. So they're all like making, they're writing down clues. I don't know. I feel like a last minute murder mystery. This is, you have to plan it out. Or like you said, Print it out from the internet, but if you're just like making up clues in the crew mess, this is gonna be bad. And then Kyle gives a little spiel about he's like, Oh, I'm not the most theatrical person. I grew up playing rugby and talking shit and biting everyone's ears off. And I'm not theatrical, but I do have moments of brilliance sometimes. I'm like, right, because he's coming up with the clues with Fraser. So of course Fraser, so of course his are like, Someone dies when they get burned by a hanger on a guy's night out. I'm like, no, Kyle. You can't just put your own life experiences. Yeah. <laughs> but that ass will never be the same. Exp Someone dies when experimenting with homosexuality, <laughs> but turns out they're just really into women. No, Kyle. Uh, That's just women you. room, they said as they died slowly. Someone someone gets killed when they spill their, their tobacco pouch on the deck of a boot. <laughs> <laughs> then the murderer gets fired. So yeah, um, yeah. now they're eating, and Fraser is down in the, in the galley, and it's a mess down there because, you know, Anthony's a busy, per busy person. He's got a lot going on, a lot of ingredients, and there's pots and pans everywhere. And it's everywhere. not like anyone's helping him clean all these pots and pans. You know what I mean? Cause yeah. Because they're down staff, no one but he's down staff too. And I don't know. I feel like when a chef is good, you just leave them alone, you know? He cleans Yeah. Them, I mean, his, his galley is is definitely wild but i feel like in in previous seasons we've seen people helping out in the galley like we're at the deck hands i know they got this murder mystery thing going on but like can't can't kyle help out can't ben help out can't sunny have sunny help out what is sunny sunny god she's really on my nerves these days sunny is on my nerves too and the thing is fraser i think is the worst here because fraser's just bragged about how he's using all of the employees to do his work. He's like, look at me delegating. That's what leaders do. Well, meanwhile, the chef has a mess and you have people writing fucking murder clues instead of yeah. helping him. So maybe your delegating should be being more helpful to the person who clearly needs it instead of having someone else do a murder party for you that you could have printed off the goddamn internet. And now I'm mad at Fraser. I didn't even know I was mad at Fraser until right now, but I am furious. Yeah, why didn't he just print out the murder mystery stuff um, before the charter even began? Like after the preference sheet, to just get that out of the way. And then know, you could be focused brag, on service. To brag that you're delegating everything when <laughs> the only when person a mess in the, in the kitchen, kitchen is providing five-star service and has zero help and is in desperate need of it. Maybe yeah. you should stop bragging about your delegation skills, sir. Hmm. So then uh, Captain Carey goes up to the guest. He goes, hey, everyone. Those not watching on video, I'm rolling my head right now. <laughs> very, very upset. Okay, go ahead, Ben. Well, uh, I just want to say, guess I got a little firm tonight, but I was worried about your safety. And for that, Uzgunum, which means I'm sorry in Turkish. I'm sure you all knew that. Just want to say, a gorilla wearing a top hat gave me a thumbs up for my great work on Duolingo today. So... Passing that on to you. Well, now it's time for the murder mystery to start. So Barbie just <laughs> runs into the room and trips on something and falls down and screams, "There's been a murder!" By the and then she's like supposed to be dead. By the way, if I if someone like stabs me or like kills me, my I'm not gonna say there's been a murder. I'd be like someone just someone's murdered me, or I would say. So and so just stabbed me. Like I wouldn't just vaguely announce there's been a murder. <laughs> I can't believe the maid on the boat isn't a better actor. 
I know. <laughs> I just expect Seriously. Barbie to just just have a better sense of of, of, of murder. <laughs> Barbie, I'm not believing your performance. Actually, I think she did a good job because I thought she tripped and fell, but I she guess did. she was she was being murdered, right? She she really she did it. She was being murdered. She did a good job, and her butt fell out. But how she, did like, they murder her? What's a running murder? <laughs> What's a murder? No, because it was like she was stabbed, and she went running into the room to announce, like like Oh my God, I've been like like I've been stabbed!" But instead, she went, "There's been a murder," <laughs> and then just died. So Leslie's like, well, I have to admit, I quite forgot this was happening. <laughs> Don't touch the boat, God damn it. Sorry, I'm still triggered. Sorry. Can we murder <laughs> Leslie before she gets us all killed? <laughs> Does anyone know where that tender is? I just want to go find it and touch it. Leslie. Captain really hates me. That's just what a socialite's wife, well, Captain's wife would do. So um, they just basically go on a scavenger hunt around the boat. Like they go to one room, they find like a, a puffy envelope and it's like, if you know what to do, you will find where you poo. Oh, to the bathroom. Everyone go to the bathroom, find the envelope in the bathroom. <laughs> so yeah, it's not the best murder mystery. Um, and it's also not a great murder when you don't care if anybody dies. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like kill them all. That's how I feel. Just yeah. And, in the end, they just wind up kind of like back, I think, at the table. And the way it ends is whoever has the glass that has like number two on it is the murderer. And uh, there's some random lady in white sparkles or sequins. And she's like, oh, I guess it's me. Whoops, guys. I murdered you all. I was like, well, <laughs> try to be in character, ma'am. Yeah, or maybe do they get to guess who's the murderer? I mean, this needed something. They, it needed some more game to it. Yeah, it needed something. So uh, I think we should talk about it for another half an hour. <laughs> I think we'll give notes. Well, uh, we can be uh, consultants on further yachts, uh, yacht yeah. charters that need some murder mystery help. Yeah. So now um, it's 11.53 and Anthony is watching a part to slow sexy music in slow motion. He's like, oh, yeah. The pot graduated high school. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to come up with French music. That's all I came up with. No, <laughs> the America. Not French. Yeah, I was. Oh, I don't think that was French at all. But okay, um, here, let's try this one. I think that's that Italian. French? Well, the guy singing is Italian, but isn't it French? No, I'm. I think it's. I believe that that song is is Italian. Let's see a French song. I tried to do some Edith Piaf before. Yeah, Edith Piaf. That's a good one. Or what about um Il était en bergère. Il était en bergère. We learned that in French class. It was about a sheep. Can or I tell what you I'm looking at Edith oh, Piaf's discography? What the fuck are these songs? I don't know any of these songs. Ma the songs that I know. Where Edith Piaf was on We Are the World, right? So that counts. <laughs> we are the world. Oh, Vian Rose, why is that so low down? It's very low on the list. I feel like it should be higher. Yeah. She just she has a deep catalog. <laughs> there it is. There, finally some French sex music. <laughs> um, so uh, he is cleaning, and then they're all just sort of going to bed, and they're all they're, they're all Fraser's like. I've aged. I'm like a 30 years old. I'm hideous and disgusting. I'm surprised this yacht hasn't run aground also with my ugliness. <laughs> so, um, and then we watch Anthony cleaning and he, he's just, he cleans and cleans and cleans. We get timestamp after timestamp, 1.15 a.m., 1.50 a.m. And then we start getting really specific, 2.17 2.31, not just 2.30, 2.31, cleaning, cleaning, cleaning. Yep, and then 3.07, he finally goes to bed, and now he's going to get bullied on this show for not cleaning enough. To which but I also, say, no fair. But, you know, let me tell you something. I mean, cleaning takes a while, but it should not have taken three hours to clean a kitchen. Did I'm you sorry. see that kitchen? Girl. It was a mess, but it should still not take three hours. But also, it shows that he's good at, he's cleaning very well. He's thorough. Listen, for daddy. Team, Team traders. 
So now it's the next morning. And uh, we have, I call it like Trixie Sheeran because it's kind of like an Ed Sheeran-esque singer who's saying like, 24 hours, seven days a week. I'm taking champagne showers, I rest and repeat. And then it's like just watching the staff wake up. Like I love, I just love the way they put these this music together. Like drinking champagne showers. <laughs> yeah. Like they're in the lap of love. While you're cleaning just... a toilet. <laughs> like dripping with diamonds. Like scrub, scrub, scrub. It's the servants. The servant woke the servants of waking up. <laughs> yeah, they really do have some irony lately with their like rich, you know. <laughs> bills, bills, bills. I got bills, bills, bills. No, like not dollar bills. Like I need you to song, sing like about literal bills, like that you're not paying for the child that you just fucking <laughs> left behind in Alaska, you know? Yeah. So Anthony's making breakfast for this final day of the charter, and um, he's like, uh, what would be a good special Frisia for the omelette? And Frisia's like, oh, I don't know. Like, but cheese and something stupid that Americans would like in it. I don't know. Why are you asking me? <laughs> he's like, it is so hard to focus on something new every day. And he's like, oh, God, just put an egg in a burger bun. <laughs> <laughs> just put a stick of Elvita in there. They're American. They love it. I've never seen a chef so disorganized in my entire life. Um, yeah, he's getting on my nerves now. You know what's so funny is when I watched the episode, he didn't get on my nerves, but now I'm like furious seeing it all come play uh, back Fraser? slowly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not, he's not on my nerves. Um, but no, Anthony is saying, no, but he just became on your nerves. I think it's because yeah, you're, you're frustrated up. that, I think you're frustrated that there wasn't more sexy French music immediately accessible to you. <laughs> I think I disturbed myself with my version <laughs> of sexy French music. You're also like a little rattled because you're, you've been reminded about how the ocean almost killed you. <laughs> it's been a rough episode for me. Yeah. Start off on a dark note, just by you talking about being 90 years old. <laughs> I know. I just took that tone. Am I, and I brought I'm Nick Mile to today. it. Yeah. But you know what? I feel like sometimes when you're in a good mood, that's when to consider the fact that we're all dying. Okay, yeah. so Curtis is with Yacht Services, and he's like, oh, just calling to say, Dylan, the new deck candy is arriving in 30 minutes. Please do not have any calories out. <laughs> we're about to be... Hi, this is uh, Norma Dundee, and we're going to send you an extremely handsome man, but he's going to be annoying as fuck, so enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> This is just, this is uh this is Norma Dundee calling to remind you that you can't fuck a personality. Thank God. <laughs> or, <laughs> as they say in Istanbul, let me <laughs> tight, think tight, about tight, it. Berkiz Liji Sikamezin, which means you can't fuck a personality in Turkish. <laughs> That's it. Wow. I think. <laughs> Sorry, I was typing out an urgent email <laughs> while I was recalling my Turkish. Had nothing to do with the other. One had nothing to do with the other. All right, so let's go meet this guy. <laughs> so um, this guy, Dylan, um, he has Karen hair, kind of like the original. What's the like original 90s. Karen's name? Uh, the Gosselin. Kate Gosselin. Like, yeah, he's got. He's yeah, got, like Kate Gosselin vibes. It reminds me of like very much like 1991. Like I feel like one of the maybe even one of the Power Rangers had this haircut. Maybe that it's like that sort of soup. He has like this like a side bang that comes really far down. And um, I'm like, is this a look that's in? Because I know someone who also has this haircut right now. And I'm like, is this coming back? Is this the look that's happening right now? I guess. I mean, I don't know. I don't have hair, so I don't understand hair culture. I'm just like, oh, you're so original. Wow, you changed your bangs. Oh, I threw you a party. Woohoo, block party. Um, so, yeah, he's a weirdo. And uh, he's like, I'm from Cape Town originally. I'm 23 years old. I've been doing yachting the past three years. I started in the south of France. I've worked on boats from 27 meters to 100 meters. Tons of boats. <laughs> I've worked my way up from deckhand to, did he say trace boat captain? I don't know what that was. And he goes, I just, I love to make people feel better by being super happy. And like, like, that's what I love doing is when I'm running, like I'm running down the road. And when I see someone, I just go like this and I go like high five. And then they like, they do high five back and they don't understand any of it. But you know what? They will remember you. I'm like, I guarantee they will not remember you. And I'll be like, who the fuck is this weird ass guy with the 90s side bang trying to give me a high five? They'll be like, some guy dressed like Kate Goslin just tried to slap him. <laughs> so weird. This world has really gone downhill. Meth, am I right? Yeah, he's <laughs> running around. Try that in my neighborhood. You'll get your ass shot. 
You come fucking punching somebody ocean. in a threatening to punch somebody while you're running. Okay? Bye. We have guns here. Okay? We may not have porn anymore or abortion or women's rights, but we do have guns. Okay. We have all met that person who <laughs> got really dark by the way <laughs> it's really, i can't stop we, it i can't lighten up i'm trying to lighten we, up but, but we I'm all like we all so much fun just rolling around in the dark what can i tell you listen we all know that person who loves to like stand by the side of the road and give like those high fives and they smile and they're super happy they play ultimate frisbee they oh, go camping hideous. they lead they lead um they often will like lead like a student group camping just do a canoe trip Ugh. camp counselor energy uh, they love ultimate frisbee. They really oh, do. They, they, that's frisbee. just what they do. They eat granola. Frisbee golf is that the same thing? Fucking frisbee no, golf. but they're in the same. He loves fr- frisbee golf. I'm not saying that he is granola, but he just eats granola, yeah. which is fine. We granola, which good. has so many calories, and like it's so weird when people who are trying to be healthy are like sitting there eating granola. Like seco baby, calories in, calories out. <laughs> do I have to teach you everything? <laughs> uh, and we'll see why this matters in just a moment. Um, also, people who are just like faking happiness to make everyone else happy. Guess what is going to make everyone else happy? Not you, okay? I don't, we don't need you for that fucking Dylan Splainer. I'm here to explain why life is so good. Fuck off. You're hot and you have like long hair. Of course, life's good for this you. Guy, Go away. This guy, when I was watching it last night, when I was watching it last night, I told Dom, I said, you know what? This guy, this is the sort of guy who has a TikTok who like goes out into a meadow is like let me show you the most awesome flower i love this flower right here this flower right now this flower blooms every single spring and gives off the most amazing scent you have to try it if you're in a meadow you have to stop what you're doing and smell this flower it's like i don't fucking care about this flower yeah. But you know he has a TikTok that's full of that, and every single one has a million views for some reason because it's a hot guy talking about flowers. Yeah, and he's amazed by simple, like every simple thing that happens. This is water that comes out of a refrigerator. <laughs> a refrigerator. <laughs> it's already refrigerated and it's filtered, so you. Do, it's amazing, and it's like you can actually drink it. Thousand views, you know, ninety-seven million views. Yeah, and he's like the type of person who's like, and here's another thing: you can actually drink this. Mm. I love it. You'll never, you'll never want for anything more because you just have this water right now. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. So um, <laughs> he's like, uh, so he arrives, right? And so the girl's like, whoa, this guy's fine. Sonny's like, that is a model. My jaw's on the floor. Yeah. And uh, Ben's like, all right, well, listen here, Dylan. You might be very, very attractive. Apparently all the girls think so, but you can't be lead deckhand yet. <laughs> I need to make sure that your personality is as strong as those gorgeous cheekbones. God, you want to make out? Well, you know what? Ben tells me he's not made a decision yet on lead deckhand. It's fully understandable. You have, you know, you have to, you know, have me prove myself and I'm ready to go. I'm ready to show them what Dylan has got. Wink. I'm like, oh gosh. And third person. Oh God. Oh, and third person. No, Dylan. (laughs) It's amazing how quickly he can destroy his hotness goodwill, you know? I feel like that's why so many hot people are silent. They've learned. They learn. Just be quiet. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You're so much hotter when you're quiet. And that goes for ugly people, too. I feel like most of us are hotter when we're just quiet, you know? It's not until yeah. people open their mouths that you realize what douchebags they are. So just in general, yeah. let's all just be quiet. I know. We. Sh- I, I want to work on that, which is funny because we spend about 45 hours a week talking. <laughs> but not outside of work. Outside yeah. of work, I'm like, please don't speak to me. <laughs> I need to be silent. Strong Save silent it. type. For very important conversations I'm having during the daytime. <laughs> you realize if you're not the strong silent type, that means you automatically are the weak chatty type. <laughs> that's, well, that's, us. That's, that's us. That was our alternate title for this podcast. Weak chatty silent types. Cha- uh, weak chatty types. <laughs> weak and chatty. Um, so now Fraser's bringing breakfast to everyone. And um, Dylan is doing that thing with the chain that we haven't seen in a few seasons where you go into like that random like death hole in the boat and have to poke at a chain with a stick <laughs> yeah. and um and now everyone here comes a french toast with a core of maple syrup leslie please stop touching the boat how many times do we have to tell you stop it touch the french toast instead and he's like would you like some sausage skrillex and uh the husband's like oh she's got plenty of sausage on this trip don't you worry kid <laughs> why does every guest this season think that we want to hear about like want to picture them fucking their nasty spouse like nobody wants that vision in our heads sirs 
I just think it's a weird thing, a weird joke to make about like to like a waiter about like your wife. <laughs> Banging you know? your wife. I don't know. I just don't think I, I think can't imagine my dad humor. doing that. <laughs> Me neither. Yeah. But I think it's vacation humor where they're like, we're wacky and fun. Look, we fuck all the time. Right, guys? Right. <laughs> just some wacky and fun, you know, mortgage and mortgage officers and loan officers, you know, mortgage brokers and loan officers, the wackiest type. So Guys, now it's, it's, here's something big that's about to happen. Big. We're going to talk, and I've got major concerns. Major coming around this side. He might get too close. Might murder the entire city. We all could die any moment. We're too crew to end with three bases short of a home run. We're ready to shoot, and we're we're fine. We made it fine. Everything's fine. Nice Everything's job. fine. Nice job. Everything's fine. Yeah, it was a lot of drama because there was a big red boat. There was a big red boat just out of nowhere in Grenada, and um. I kind of like that big red boat. I kind of want to know what was going on on it. It was great. But uh, they're like, we have to draw, we have to park our car next to a bigger car. What are we going to do? It was fine. Everything was fine. (laughs) It was was so much drama. It was so much drama. And they even put a commercial break in the middle of it. They really acted like that St. David was about to like crash into a cafe, you know, Australian style. It was fine. Everything was fine. It's amazing how they can do that every episode. And now we're going to dock. It's the most terrifying docking we've ever, ever. All right, we're, we're fine now. We made it. We made so it. So now safe, it's time to say goodbye to these guests. And Leslie's like, oh, I'm getting a little bit emotional thinking about how many of you are improperly invested. So. <laughs> Gil Gil. That's, what he's, that's good boy in Turkish. Just wanted to part that with you as you get off the boat. Um. So yeah, He's they like, also. Right, I just like to say goodbye and Teknaya Dakonma. All right, Leslie. That's don't touch the boat, Leslie. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say, Leslie, uh, Fez, uh, Oran Lari Dusior. <laughs> Interest rates are going down. It's like, listen, Salkarin Skrillex Aptal. Who's your? Your, your Skrillex hair is stupid, Leslie. Like, get off the boat. <laughs> All right, so they're they're gone. She gives a nice. She she gives like a whole thing. She's like, and this is gonna make me emotional. This is something that has been on my bucket list of mine, which is selling. Six loans all at once. Wow. Thank you guys. You're great customers. You guys really exceeded all expectations. So she chokes up because this was the trip of a lifetime for her. And oh then God, they look Sunny. Sunny's hit her bucket list, everybody. Throw her overboard. You did it. <laughs> It's time to go. You've accomplished <laughs> everything you need to accomplish. Goodbye. Clear. Huh? So um, now they all change. And so Ben and Sonny are kissing in that, in like the toy garage. And um, Sonny is talking about how she was in love once. She was in love with like a mountaineer, but she's a mermaid. And he's the one that got away, I guess. But now she's got Ben. I'm like, wow, that's a sad trajectory for your love life. <laughs> that really is. And it's also showing a little bit crazy. Like, You've been with Ben for two seconds, okay? Yeah. It's like, yeah, now I have Ben. Like, dun, dun, dun. So you have bad taste and you're crazy. That's what I'm saying mm-hmm. so far. Um, so Sonny is talking to Dylan and trying to get a read on him. And she asks him if he re- if he drinks. And he's like, I'm really hard on myself. Uh, if you give me a choice between like McDonald's or salad with broccoli, I'll take the salad with broccoli. Because he- here's the thing. I used to be really, really fat. I'm like, oh, no. Oh, here God, comes. here we go. I hate when that's. Now, listen, this is someone who really is on a mission to stop talking about. Like, oh, my God, I'm so fat. Ah. I'm really trying. It's hard to unprogram yourself. So I kind of get it. But. What's even worse than making your personality like, oh, my God, I need to lose weight, is I've lost weight. Oh, my God, I can't. I can't. Yeah. Please don't it's... tell this story 30 times a day, even though I know you're about to. Well, here it comes. You know, I was always bullied for being not attractive and overweight, and I was very insecure in so many ways. And I decided uh, it's either going to break me or make me, so I decided I'm going to get better body than all of them. And we're seeing pictures of young Dylan, who's like a chubby, and... And then he says, you know what? My proudest accomplishment is the double chest bump. Look. And so he does like a pec flex. flex, pec flex. And he's like, this is James and this is Barry. Oh, I was like, God, I you hate know, James and I hate Barry. And <laughs> you know what? Here's the thing. Like, if you were bullied and stuff like that, I don't like to hear the story. Like, I was bullied by thin people, so I became thinner than them. That's such a lame. That's still 
uninspiring story. Like, how about I was bullied, so I learned how to find people's social security to ruin their credit and destroy their lives. That's what I want to hear. I want to hear a good old-fashioned fucking revenge story. Take out the bullies. Don't become one. Like, what the fuck kind of I story mean, is this? Am I supposed to be rooting for you? Kill the bullies. <laughs> well, don't kill yeah, them. Yeah, I, I think that murder the, a lot today. The, progressive, the progressive message would be that you learn to love yourself for who you are and who cares about people. They are, they're probably insecure with their own things, and you are perfectly happy with the body that you have. But the, like the teen movie version is... Yeah, I was chubby, so I went. I came back, and now I'm like a stud, and now I'm going to like get the girl, and you know, go be the problem. Well, this is the middle of that story, right? Where he's still yeah. learning the lesson. Like he's finally got the goal, where he's like, "I'm thin now. I can do whatever I want because I'm thin. I'm gonna push a fat person into a locker." You know, that's coming. But then he's gonna like learn that that's not all there is to life, and like, yeah, he shouldn't be thin just to appease bullies. You know, because right now it's a sad story, Dylan. Got to tell you, okay. This is yeah. why nobody wants to fucking give you high fives when you're running. Fucking weirdo. That being said, great work. Great work. Uh, now, personality next. That's going to be the harder one. You can't just eat broccoli and have that be fixed. So, um... <laughs> I was about to say eating broccoli isn't a personality, but we all know that's a lie. That's Yeah, welcome <laughs> we to Los Angeles. <laughs> welcome to, like, food culture. Like, right now, it's uh, cabbage is the thing. Cabbage is personality. And I'm glad that I was ahead of that trend. I wrote a I NBD cabbage. fancy about cabbage like six weeks ago. And then the New York Times like two weeks ago was like, cabbage is the new cool vegetable. And I was like, yeah, I know, bitches. Cabbage is my personality. <laughs> Broccoli is next year. We've been um, eating cabbage for like a year on this show. So you're already like purple pretty... cabbage with my Asian slaw salad. Thanks. Hi, but this is like a green cabbage moment for me. So it's like not quite the same. Oh my God, so. You're so unique. Yeah, it's like cabbage. I'm like a, the basics. I would have to say that, like, if you had to like see where I was, I like am I like INTJ or whatever Myers Briggs. I think my Myers Briggs is cabbage. <laughs> I'm sorry, who's Myers Briggs? Were they fat? <laughs> Cause I'm not anymore. <laughs> Look at that person down. Okay, so now Zandy FaceTimes her mom, and um, you know, her mom's showing off the goats. The face yeah, and Ben says hi. It's like they're like, oh, he's like, oh, I love your daughter, all that stuff. And then we have a tip meeting, and Fraser's walking. He's like looking for the rosé to pour, and he like walks by, calling us, "Where's the rosé?" And close that fly, please. Which is exactly <laughs> how you would expect Fraser to make that request. Uh, they got thirty thousand dollars, which is a yeah. really good tip. Yeah, and um, Dylan's even getting some money, which is pretty good. He's like, oh my god, I hope I don't eat this. Um, <laughs> Dylan is so obsessed that it's gonna. I'm gonna be triggered this whole time. You are. This is gonna be a difficult Morning. second half of the season for you. Only I love when they're like only nine episodes left. I'm like, yeah, that's called half only a season. Nine. That's called an entire season of. We're only on episode table. eight. <laughs> <laughs> only fourteen episodes left before three weeks off and another eighteen episodes. Only three full months to go. <laughs> three. Only three full months to go before we go to an identical <laughs> spin-off of this show that's just slightly different. <laughs> So, uh, what's next? I guess Below Deck sail uh, Sailing is next, right? I don't know. That one's I, don't know. I wonder what's going to happen with that one with that Gary. Huge I'm assuming mess. they fired him. They probably had to reshoot well, not it. Until the season was already shot, I thought. So, I don't know. I don't know what's going to go on with that. I think they're just holding it. They're like, oh, we'll just wait. <laughs> we'll just wait for people to forget that Gary's a sexual assaulter. <laughs> I feel like ass. next season of Below Deck Sailing is just going to be like a raft with like a sad little t-shirt as a sail because that boat is gets I mean, more and more shape every is season. Sad, isn't it? Is that why it's fun? <laughs> I think that is why it's fun. It's just like the most decrepit vessel, like not just on Bravo, like on the high seas. <laughs> Below Deck Popsicle Sticks. <laughs> I know, Carrie has a lot of nerve comparing this to the Titanic when we have Captain Glenn's ship over there that's actively sinking as we speak. <laughs> okay, uh, so now it's time to go out and party. And so Fraser is talking in the band about how hot Dylan is. And Carl's like, look at him. I'd fuck him for fuck's sake. <laughs> yeah. And uh, then they get to the restaurant and like cheers and shots. I also want to point out, by the way, I do feel like it's important. Sonny 
like she comes out with her look for the evening is she's like wearing kind of like a shirt that's like open down to her navel and so it's like and her like her breasts are kind of like in the shirt a little bit so it's like it's very plunging neckline and sexy and she, it's like she's oh so sunny but oh, then zandy beautiful. coincidentally wears a top that's just like a ba boom like the like the boobs are out and big and i think this is an important point the i think it, it i think it informs the drama that happens later the boobs of it all the boobs of it all i do think so so um, matter. i mean boobs make huge differences i mean there's a whole industry boobs look at, look yeah. at what people do for boobs you know yeah i mean i don't understand them mine are natural so <laughs> i guess it's just that's my what privilege. you won't do do for boobs yeah i'm like can um, I get closer to my belly button that would be great <laughs> <laughs> i really love them to hit me in the face more whenever i do <laughs> any kind of movement so they all go out meanwhile we cut to captain carrie alone on the yacht practicing his turkish he's like kadar khan herkes jemaid noise got that one right that means the boob industry isn't fair, but what is? You know, I used to go to high school with someone named Kadar. I think he may have actually been Turkish. It all comes full circle, huh? What does Kadar mean? You just looked it up. I mean, obviously, we all know that Kadar stands for, um, I mean, do I even have to say it? It stands for Adventure. much. <laughs> It stands for much. Kadar means much. Wait, so Kadar's. So I can't your believe Kadar was just like a real glutton. <laughs> my he son was much. Kadar and his <laughs> brother a lot. That's what Kadar's name meant all this time. Much. I don't know. Maybe it was in a different language. And also, you never know with Google Translate. You know, it tells yeah. you some crazy shit. Because remember when We've... we were in Mexico and I kept trying to use Google Translate and people kept laughing at me because I was saying everything incorrectly. I mean, I've never felt like a, that much of an asshole. <laughs> okay, so Barbie is like, guys, I just had a deja vu. What do you think about deja vu? Do you even think deja vu is a thing? Like, is that legitimate? What do you guys think about it? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the McLaughlin group has been rebooted. <laughs> Barbie is leading the round table. If there is another seat available on The View, please contact Barbie. She has <laughs> thoughts and opinions and questions. <laughs> And Dylan's like, I think, uh, Dylan's like, I think there's multiple timelines, and I think it's a memory you have from a different timeline. No. Yeah. Like a timeline where we've all just sunken and died on the Titanic. <laughs> like bleep timelines don't have galleries. This is what, <laughs> you know what, Hollywood has to be more responsible. Hollywood has put out all these multiverse movies recently. You can't do that. Look what's happening to these idiots. They all now think deja vu is because we have, we're in a multiverse. Yeah. Um, so Barbie, the Barbie and Sonny are laughing in their confessional about what an idiot this guy is. And they're like, oh my God, he just needs to not speak. You know, they're like, just, <laughs> just please don't talk. His God, you're so hot. Just be quiet. Yeah. And so, um, then Fraser's like, guys, I have a bug in my drink. It looks like cat. And then Kyle comes over and slurps the bug out of his drink. And he's like, oh my God. And he, I think he's like turned on by it. I think so. I mean, you listen, it's slim pickings. It's it's slim pickings on the boat being gay or straight, right? Yeah. I mean, look how well Ben does. Yeah. But it's especially slim if you're gay. I mean, any attention from another guy when you're gay, I think someone's slurping a bug out of my drink, I'd be like, that's hot for now. Let's, <laughs> let's figure out how to make this marriage work. Yeah. So they all go off to smoke, and so then Anthony and Dylan are talking, and Anthony's like, oh, ladies look good tonight, eh? And Dylan's like, yeah, really sexy, bro, really sexy. He's like, yeah, you know, like, but unfortunately, Sonny is with Ben. And he's like, well, maybe I'll wait for the others, too. No, no, because I'm waiting for the others, too. I hope she's hot, right? Oh, yes, I really hope she's hot. It's like, neither of you guys are going to get the others, too, whoever it is. Yeah, you're not. Sorry. You're always going to be those guys sitting in the back, like, all right, just waiting my turn. <laughs> um so let's see where are we but there's people so are partying, right? just, yeah so now they're like Fred just saying how he needs to talk to anthony about the galley because it's really disorganized and um he fraser's also feeling like he's doing like way too much for what's expected and but he's gonna like tell anthony I'm sorry, like, did we see fraser cleaning the galley no. did i miss did i miss this scene because fraser is acting like he's been down there helping this guy 
do things. And he could be because there there is a, there is that aspect to Below Deck where I'm just like, oh, this has been a fun half an hour scrolling on my phone. Like, I get it. But was there a scene where he was helping him? Because he's I literally acting like he helped so. him, and he did not, to my recollection. I don't think anyone helped him, which is why there was such a... So fuck off. Yeah, I mean, not a you, massive. Obviously. Um, so then we go back to Dylan, who this is apparently another side of his personality is that he likes to say things in a high pitched voice. He starts going, "You guys good? You guys good? All right, baby, let's go. You guys good? You guys good?" Yeah. Poor Dylan. Poor, Imagine poor working Dylan. out that much because you were bullied, and then turn on the TV and having the the gorgeous girls making fun of you, and how you just need to shut up. It also yeah. is so reassuring to know that like personality can win at the end of the day meaning that like but does doesn't it? matter how good he looks well yeah i think you know he may look really good but his corn he's just too much for cornball yeah um okay so but isn't that a, isn't that personality losing at the end of the day <laughs> not winning <laughs> well no meaning that like personality matters is like the, is what matters the most matters, yeah yeah it matters um, the most so it wins by mattering more but it causes him to lose by mattering more. Yeah. Um, so, guys, be the whole package. That's all we're asking. Whole package. Just be everything to everyone all at once. Okay. Which yeah. Which is also a very good movie. So, um, now they're in the I club. I've got a multiverse. And Dylan's like, five time. Five time, baby. It's five time, baby. Let's go. Five time. Five <laughs> time. Five time. Don't say five time. Okay. I'm just going to say this right now. Especially that pitch. <laughs> You're not going to win the girls by going around going, vibe time. No vibe time. No more vibe, vibe time. time. So Zandy is dancing by herself, and Ben's kind of, you know, walking around, hugging her, getting all touchy. And he's like, you're my favorite. And he's all handsy with her. And Sunday very season, handsy. And gets really mad because she has just told us that Ben is basically her new love story. And then he does this. Yeah. And, like, it's no surprise because Zandy, she has these enormous, gorgeous breasts. And so they are like, they're just like wafting around in the club. So of course Ben is going to float to them, you know, like you just know. It. And then he's just sort of like lingering around. He's going to try to sort of get a free graze, a free touch, you know, feel them on his chest. That's what he's trying to do right now. Let's be honest. Yeah. Um, and he's just, ben. he's just being gross. <laughs> Dom is just laughing at me over here at the side. <laughs> <laughs> Dom just had to leave the room because he can't believe the things that are coming out of my mouth. He's just no, he's just walking. He's leaving. <laughs> he's exiting. Love it. Okay, so Sunny is now pissed, right? So she's in yeah. the bathroom, like I'm so pissed. And um, what's her? It's like I'm pissed like, about a piece of celery. This is not your love story with the Ben. This is the Sunny story. It's not the Ben story. So I need you to concentrate on just this is you and not him. Okay. Yeah, unfortunately, though the the Sunny story is not a not a terribly interesting story. <laughs> That's the bad part about it. Yeah. So they get into the bands, and Kyle's like, Fraser, I love you. I honestly love you. And Fraser, Fraser goes, well, give us a kiss then. And then they start to make out right there in the van. Yeah, I was cheering. It's I was nice cheering to too. We don't get to see that a lot, you know? So Not like, only oh that. Oh, my God, representation. Yeah, and you know what? I also loved how Ben was like, oh, and they were just all like kind of like laughing and like cheering it on. They weren't like scandalized. They weren't like, oh, my God, like a gay kiss. They just It was just like – uh, it was just like a big tawdry moment the way any other tawdry moment happens in the vans. I was just so grateful it wasn't Kyle from the other blue deck. I was like, thank oh, God. God. Thank God it's Fraser. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you for the small things, you know. So then um, uh, Fraser is like, people love making out with me, especially straight guys. You know, sometimes they like to show me their appreciation with a kiss. I'm not mad about it. To be fair, Kyle was probably so wasted he thought he was making out with Tilda Swinton. <laughs> Which, who wouldn't when you get the chance, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Craziest thing happened. Driving back from the club. And Tilda Swinton was right there in, in the van. An Oscar winner. I had to make out with her. Uh, okay, so uh, Sonny's giving Ben the cold shoulder now. And he just doesn't understand it. He's like, what? Just don't yeah. get it. 
I don't understand how I'm all over that girl at the club and she's mad, which I probably did on purpose to make her mad. And now I just don't get it. I mean, I try with these girls, but they're just always so mean to me. I just need to go make out with someone else now. This is all going to be her fault in about five minutes. It's like the fuckboy playbook. Here we it, go. Here so, it is. He literally repeat. says it. He goes, he's like, you know, it's such a roller coaster with Sonny. One moment she's kissing me, the next she's giving me the cold shoulder. I just don't know what to do. This is why I don't get attached to people anymore because there's too much bullshit that comes with relationships. Okay, okay, woe is you. You, the, the innocent victim here. You just have to protect your heart here. He acts like she just is so fickle and mercurial and this just happens to happen. And God, women are crazy. Do you not remember that you actually like undermined her publicly on the radio and embarrassed her? Uh, that's why she got mad at you. And by the way, that was the only thing that she got mad at you about. And you're acting like it was constantly that she was going hot and cold, hot and cold. It was actually just one time. And the second time is when you went up to Zandy and were all handsy with her. And it may have been innocent, but it actually, honestly, I actually, I'm, I'm team Sunny about this one. I don't think that she's being like crazy jealous. I think it looked like you were moving, like you were trying to make moves on Zandy. So of course she's going to be upset, but he makes it seem like, oh, wow. She just like inherently unstable and this is why you have to protect your heart because these unstable dangerous people are just gonna stomp all over you no fuck yourself yeah but here's what kills me i know that sunny's gonna be like i'm so mad okay i'm not mad anymore yeah Love that being you. said and that's what makes me fucking crazy that yeah, she even exactly. cares that this fucking loser who she knows is a fucking loser she knows she's it. all already talking about him being her next love story and all worked up over him it's ben come on like have some fucking taste like, how many times do we have to see this on Blow Deck? Honestly, the one who was really the best at this was uh, Mads from last season on Sailing, who was basically, you know, we were so worried for her because she was like, yeah, I'm just fucking Gary because I'm horny. Oh, well. And we're like, oh, here it comes. And then she's going to get her feelings. And she just never did all season. She's like, yeah, I'm just, yeah, she's just like, fucking no, him. Fuck you. Yeah. Hate she's you. like, yeah, I really wanted to actually get with Alex, but I ruined it because I'm sleeping with Gary, with Gary. So. I guess I'll just keep fucking him. <laughs> <laughs> she did it right. Only to the point where she actually hurt the feelings of the fuck boy. You know, yeah. Which was great. Which was okay, wonderful. So now uh, we get some, we start watching Dylan unravel. It's late night and he's unraveling. He's like, omens, omens, vibe, omens, vibe. Oh, tuna, tuna vibe. Oh, it's a tuna vibe. Oh, God, I better do a big gym session tomorrow after this. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> hot boy dick vibe hot boy dick vibe I'm like yes watching him spin was, out I fucking love it I was like Ronnie will be so delighted by this scene <laughs> I was so Ben and Zandy are hanging out on the deck and he's just like in his speedos and so Sunny comes up and she's like looking for a cigarette or something and he's like oh I threw it out because I thought it was wet so I threw it out she goes okay copy and just walks away so she's all angry and then she goes up to Barbie and she's like I just I can't be nice to Zandy right now I'm like jealous obviously I can't be around them when they're together I'm like ew you're jealous of Ben come on Sonny yeah and do better Fraser is like well he has had his eyes on you since he got on the boat and she goes yeah because I made it happen not because he wanted it I just made him on me and they're like no come on now that's not right and so Barbie goes and tells Zandy, she's like, listen, you know, you should probably talk to Sonny because, you know, Ben wants to take care of you because you're drinking and I guess he's being a good guy. But, you know, I know that it's just you guys have a sister and brother relationship, but not everybody really gets that. So Sandy's like, I probably have more chemistry towards her than to Ben, but I want Ben in my life because he's like my brother, like my really pervy kind of gross brother and Barbie's like well, yeah well she doesn't get that so Zandy is like well you know Sonny has nothing to worry about like this is ridiculous like I just Ben's just like my friend <sighs> but then Sonny, then she turns it and she's like well fuck her then I didn't do, I'm not yeah. doing anything to that fucking girl fuck that girl yeah no I kind of get that but at the same time you know she didn't say anything to you Barbie did <laughs> so like if Sonny had done something I get it but this is Ben and you can't tell me that you don't see that Ben is acting like that towards you if you know Ben is hooking up with Sonny and then Ben's all over you you don't think that's creepy I'm sorry with this brother and sister bullshit but yeah ugly brothers and sisters don't do that you know what I mean it's only the hot <laughs> it's only the hot ones <laughs> I know I'm like. a, I, I I support Zanny the situation I understand her she's like why am I the one that she's mad at? It's because also like, if Sonny's gonna be I mad at anyone, it, she should be mad at Ben. Saying, don't be mad at her. Be mad at Ben. Okay, I'm sorry. I'll be quiet. Make your point. Well, no. I mean, I, if I were, 
if I were Zandy, I'd be mad at at Sunny because Sunny's mad at her. Like don't, you're you're mad at me. This is bullshit. I'm not gonna be like I'm not doing anything. So um, then Fraser checks in on Zandy, and then she's like, she, she thinks that she thinks that me and Ben ha have a romantic connection. And then Sunny, of course, then Sunny does this. She slinks into Ben's bed, and she's like, you know, when Zandy's drunk, she's all about you, and that triggers me so much. Look, if Sunny is horny and just wants to have sex, I totally support it. Go, go have sex, you know. But like this whole thing, like crawling back, like hoping to get get Ben's uh, affections to wrestle and him back from Zandy. The woman in the situation no. is so fucking gross, and of course she does that. It's like you know that she's gonna, you know that she's just that gonna. Do, you can just sense it about Sunny. You know she's gonna yeah. fucking do that. But she's like crawling back into his bed and villainizing the other woman. But then. Uh, so to me, so is Andy. She's villainizing the woman. Villainize Ben. That guy was clearly all over you at the bar. And if he's hooking up with someone else, he's clearly being disrespectful to that person. Whether you think he's really romantically into you or not, clearly mm -hmm. he's being a dick to that girl. So now, again, it's going to become about the girls fighting over this fucking piece of shit guy who's just not treating anyone well, you know? And who it's also is going to, as we see, is literally going to drop Sunny in a second, the moment a new hot stew comes on board, as seen in the trailer. So basically, Zandy's like, you weren't committed and you were acting crazy with me and you're always angry with me and you're always blah, blah, blah. Yeah. It's like, I don't know. Like, I feel like I don't know who you are sometimes. Like, sometimes you're just really sweet and then you get cold and I just don't understand. I just need someone who, like, like it's just a little bit more relaxed. I mean, we've seen this a million times on Below Deck, all the Below Decks that this happens. Yeah. Well, gross. gross. And you would think that these people would watch Below Deck and learn, you know? But you don't learn, you know? And these guys just keep getting promoted. Well, you know, daddy issues never go away. So, because that's what I, I always blame everything on daddy issues. <laughs> but I do think that there's something to it. Well, daddy issues are unlike daddies. They stay. <laughs> That's there. Therein is the, the nice irony. Dark note. <laughs> I know. A nice dark recap. Well, everyone, watch out for the ocean and daddy issues. I'm glad you all listened. Listen, if the ocean doesn't drown you, surely your daddy issues will. <laughs> surely your lifetime of trauma will. <laughs> Uh, well, what a delight, everyone. Thanks so much for listening. We appreciate you. We got so many great recaps coming up later this week. Be sure to go to our website, buy tickets to our shows. If you're in town or thinking about traveling to any of the shows, go check them out there, and we will catch you on the next episode. Bye. Bye. Bye.